Welcome back to ERSC's Recruiting Roundup with Scott Schrader. I'm Dylan Brazier, and we're back on another Monday with some more important recruiting news. Before we get into the show, I want to make sure and thank our sponsor, Bird Dogs. Thanks so much to Bird Dogs for sponsoring this video and sending me some of their signature Bird Dogs shorts. They're designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving me a truly sculpted look. Other shorts are made of restricting stiff cotton, but Bird Dogs fixes this using cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, but stretches to get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Unfortunately, Bird Dogs is no longer offering the free tumbler with your order, but don't worry if you're a fan of free stuff, they're going to offer a free tech hat with every order. It's white, has a signature Bird Dogs logo, and it looks fantastic. Go to www.birddogs.com slash USC for the free tech hat with your order, or use promo code USC at checkout. That's www.birddogs.com slash USC or promo code USC at checkout. Uh, Scott, I don't know what you've been doing the past week or maybe what you're about to do, but if you want to touch on that. Well, the, the, with the start of fall camp, I've, I've been just going to USC practices to uh, just kind of get a look at the guys, help out with some some interviews and all that kind of stuff. It's really you know, it's the time of year. What's interesting about high school football is that in different states, and as you know, USC is recruiting kids from all over the country. So that they have these different start dates for when they start their football seasons. But we have we have USC fall camp that took precedent for for week one anyway. So we've now had I think six practices. So I will start going to to practices. I went to Sarah last week. I went to see Dakota Fields. He took a trip to Oregon, which I believe we actually talked about last week. And does USC have something to worry about? Was one of the topics that we covered. And the answer for now, I don't. You know, look, I'm done <laughs> trying to figure out what's going to happen down down the road. I'm just out of that game. But as of now, USC fans have nothing to worry about with Dakota Fields. That's really so. Um, he took the visit, just kind of, you know, wanted to take a visit before uh, the dead period started on August 1st. He did that, and now he's focusing on, on fall camp. But this upcoming week, I will be back in the Washington, D.C. area. I'm going to go see Jalen Harvey. USC's feeling good about him. Uh, that's uh, Roy Manning's top edge target for class of 2024 or one of them um so while i'm back there there's going to be a lot of guys that the usc's recruiting from the class of 2025 um st francis academy's got a bunch so i'll go i'll go see that school i'll go see good council i'll go probably see a couple more schools and then on august 18th i will be at if usc saw a shot at edward houston which i'm told they do uh, i'll be at buford versus st francis academy in Bu buford georgia on August 18th. And then I will head get my ass back to Los Angeles for the season opener for USC on August 26th. So you got a pack next two weeks. Uh, so Jalen Harvey and Edric Houston, you're going to go visit. Wow. Perfect. And then, you know, there's other guys there too. You know, there's guys that like Buford is a school. It's kind of like the only way I can, the now, best analogy I can use is it's, it's, it's like St. John Bosco in modern day of Georgia. Of the East Coast. Gotcha. In, in my mind, because you know, you, you have so many elite prospects at this school. Um, and so it's it's a very talented school. Jaden Perlotti, linebacker, class of 2025, committed to the University of Georgia. Um, he's a guy that's going to be back for a visit. He's at Buford High School. Um, a prospect USC missed out on, uh, Dylan Rayola, transferred to Buford High School. So they have they have so many guys. It, it's, it's incredible. So, yeah, if USC doesn't have a shot at Edward Houston, I, I will be somewhere else, though. I'm not going back if USC's got no shot at him. Of course, of course. Good to know. Well, thank you, Scott, for uh, sharing your, your future schedule. Uh, we'll move on to the next topic. And we just kind of want to uh, re uh, update you guys on the recruiting rankings. So, as far as the national recruiting rankings for the 2024 class, USC slid a little bit. Uh, we were at five originally. Now we're at 13. So, still pretty good. And um, that's Gordon on three, of course. And uh, as far as the Big Ten rankings go, we're number four. We were number three, but uh, Penn State passed us up, so we're now at number four. And, and then, uh, Scott, I just kind of want to see where your thinking is at. I mean, fans are worried. I, I don't think we have a reason to be worried. Of course, we expected July to be a little slower. And uh, But do we think it's going to ramp up as the season goes on with our success? Well, you know, I, you, know you look at this, this list, and again, you know, you've got a bunch of teams down there that – it's like USC's got 16 commits. They we we knew if they didn't add more that there were going to be programs around the country that are going to be adding commits and they were going to pass the USC. So 16 is not a very, very 
high number as it is right now. But, you know, if USC can land somebody like Jalen Harvey, uh, get Sienna Laulea, who's somebody that we may be talking about. Maybe we'll just bang him out right now. He's, he's a JC cornerback target from San Mateo College in yeah. the San Francisco area, right by the airport. Um, he is one of the top targets for Dante Williams at cornerback. Yeah. He's about, he recently put us in his top five. Just for, just for yes. Years. And and he was going to visit during the summertime. There was something that happened to where he had to be at the junior college he's at for a calendar year in order to be able to take a visit to, to USC. So he was planning originally to come for the spring game, this, that. So he is going to be taking his official visit to USC during the football season. But he's a top guy, 6'4 cornerback. I mean, talk about long. You know, they've already got Malachi Crawford, who is going to redshirt this year, but they brought him from the last recruiting class. He's also 6'4, 6'5. So USC is going to have some serious length at cornerback in the future. But uh, yeah, overall, people are just going to have to, to, to reset the way they approach this in their minds with recruiting because we are now focused on high school prospects. But when you have a school like USC that's going to be bringing in five to seven transfers every year, you have to figure out what the ranking is and the impact that a recruiting class has on a program after all the transfers are included. You know, so you're going to look at a high school class USC made like last year be they finished number seven or eight or wherever they finished in the on three or, or 247 rankings. And if you factored in the transfers, USC was number one. If you took the combined USC had the number one class of new players that they brought in last year. So there's just going to be a new way that got people like, like you and me and, and all, all of our subscribers at we are SC are just going to have to reprogram the way they look at this stuff. You can't look at the high school stuff and go, Oh yeah, we're like top eight. Well, it, it, you know, that's important. You got to bring in the high school guys because you're going to develop them over the years. You know, you, you want to have a lineman in ideally for a couple of years and you can they get to learn your offense. You get to learn the way that you coach and they develop physically. So, you know, I won't go on too much more of a rant on this topic, but, you know, it is the combination of the high school players and, and the transfers. And my last point on this is we're going to publish a story or maybe we already have on the number of starters I, I know on defense the number of starters on usc's defense this upcoming season nine of them are transfers wow that's a whole new team not all came in last year but like jacoby covington and you know we're, we're talking like caleb williams is a transfer right so you know you can't just look at last year you're looking at look at the guys that are making the impact right now came in through the transfer portal you said go down your list of, of guys down you know plan c d e and f and, you know, and you would take guys because you had to fill a roster. You had to have bodies. Even for practices, you need to have bodies. The the more talented, athletic, physically strong that these guys are at every position, obviously the better. So, you know, you now you you, you just don't settle on guys. Now you, you move on to the transfer portal and take your chances. USD just happens to be a premium destination for the transfers right now. So for USD to have that mindset that we can go get guys in the transfer portal, to me, makes perfect sense. Yeah, 100%. And I kind of liked how you uh, said how we have to reprogram how the way we look at college football. I feel like, I mean, with NIL, with the, just the pace of yeah. football, it's everything's changing around us. So we kind of yeah. have to just, you know, change our perspective on how we look at things. I, I like You that. know what? what I, this will be my last point, I, I swear. But <laughs> keep, what I find kind of humorous, and there's some of us that had this conversation last week at USC practices. You know, nowadays, you know, you have these guys that were known as the top recruiters in the country. And and now, I mean, you could be a C plus recruiter with a checkbook. Yep. And she was like, man, you know, he's kill our coach is crushing it on the recruiting trail. You know, you give me a checkbook, yeah, and a Florida State logo or something like that, or a USC logo. Uh, you know, I'm going to go out and get guys. That's just a fact. So I'm less impressed with 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 the poll from the element of of how much of a factor the coaches are. They're not irrelevant. But let's face it, some of these kids are choosing their third, fourth, fifth, and sixth top choices because the NIL money is so good. If you want, I'm going I'm to give you an example here. I'm going to go to USC's recruiting class. And we're looking, we'll, we'll go to Xavier Jordan since he's the, he's the top-ranked USC commit. His valuation is $144,000. Well, I would venture to say that that's probably what he's going to be earning roughly at USC at, 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 when he's playing. You know, I, I don't think these these guys are, are going to come in and these freshmen come in 
prior to playing and they sign with House of Victory or whatever NIL collective it, it should be at USC. Um, but in order to really maximize how much money you're getting paid, you need to play. You have to play a certain amount of reps. They're not just going to keep upping your NIL money if you're if you're catching two passes, you know, a, a month or whatever it might be for a receiver. But but I think I look at it at, at Xavier Jordan, and I think that that's pretty accurate. I think Zach Branch was somewhere like three hundred thousand or something like that. And, yeah. But that's, that's he's definitely getting paid that at USC. One hundred percent. Yeah. So. I, I think overall, it's hard to figure all this out because you do look at numbers. Sometimes you're looking at, at some, a worth for somebody, and it's probably closer to zero than it is to the number that's out there. But anyway, we, I won't rant rant on about this topic either. But yes, we were going to move into this topic of Xavier Jordan. Yeah. And, and Just recently, um, I mean, we, when we recruited him, he was at number 79 overall wide receiver. And uh, over the past few months, uh, I mean, he's been obviously the rise. Uh, his stock has been rising, and he's currently rose 20 overalls to number 59 overall receiver. Um, and then Scott, if you just want to reiterate Xavier Jordan and his play style just for the fans. Yeah, you know, well, with Xavier Jordan, he was he was a guy that when USC offered him, um, we actually he was we didn't have a ranking for him when USC offered Xavier Jordan. I remember I remember I wrote an article and I referred to uh Xavier Jordan as the number one wide receiver target on the West Coast. But what what you're watching, you're watching the guy who's gonna run and he doesn't even know how to run routes yet. So you're, you're, you're watching a guy who has an unlimited potential of athleticism and football ability. He's a smart kid. Um, you know, he's, he's going to come in and he's not going to be a problem. He's going to be willing to, to be coached up. Um, and, you know, he's going to learn a lot at USC, but he's a guy that's going to go out and, and, and make a lot of grabs like a Jordan Addison did. He, he gives off a lot of similar vibes to, to what Addison does. And so Xavier's a, a kid that's going to beat you deep. He's going to run good routes. He's going to run crossing pad. I mean, you can get him the ball in the backfield. He's just a guy to me that's going to be extremely dependable and going to be a guy that a quarterback down the road, he has – every quarterback's got a guy. And and I believe Xavier Jordan on any team in the country can be that guy. Perfect. Yeah, definitely. And then we're going to move on to uh, just a um, – we recently uh, offered a 2024 linebacker by the name of Wyatt Simmons out of Arkansas. He is a three-star, number 54 linebacker in the cycle. So keep an eye out uh, for him as we go throughout the season and his, at his uh, recruitment status. And then – perfect. And then so we're going we're gonna to wrap up today's show with kind of the fall of the Pac-12. Uh, if, you, if you remember last week, we kind of said uh, once Oregon and Washington leave, it's time to quit. And, well, guess what? Oregon, Washington left. Arizona State left. Everyone's bailing on the Pac-12. Yeah. Three teams left. Oregon State, Stanford, Cal. What do they do? You know, there's a lot of talk about the Mountain West. Man, you know, Stanford's not going to the Mountain West, so we can <laughs> we can eliminate the Cardinal from that discussion. Um, you know, there's no way they're going to the Mountain West. But it's probably, as things stand right now, it's probably, you know, there's probably going to be, I, I think I saw somebody post an article at, at WRSC today. It was, it was, I don't know where it was written, but it did make a lot of sense that maybe, you know, 2024, you've got kind of like a scheduling relationship with the Mountain West. And then you figure out like who's going to all merge into that conference. But the question was, is there room for, everyone in the mountain west so would there be some mountain west schools that could end up getting pushed out because they want to add these pac-12 schools so that could be an, an interesting dynamic to, to whatever develops there but i don't know what you do and it, it kind of breaks your heart in, in a way because you have these these athletic departments that are depending on this income this pac-12 level income and and, and going forward they're going to be operating on a mountain west budget Definitely. And this yeah. is horrible coming at a time for Oregon State because, you know, they've been in the trenches for the past 10 years. But just recently, they're starting to get their stock up. And now the Pac-12 is now bailing. And I don't know if they can get a spot in the Big 12, or not even the Big 10. So, I mean, what are they going to do? Yeah, there's, there's really nowhere to go. So that's why we're saying Mountain West. Yeah. You know, I mean, just, like you said, Stanford's not going to join the Mountain West. I no. mean, I feel like they just got to stay independent. I mean, they already have a they already have a little partnership with Stan, uh, not, not Stanford, Notre Dame. And so I feel like they can they can kind of just stay independent, like like BYU, like that. Yeah, you know that's not ideal long term. 
you know, I know Stanford's got a lot of money, but they allocate money from their endowment to go pay for things all year. It's not like, you know, they have this unlimited supply of them. They, they've got a ridiculous sum, but they already started the, the, the ball rolling on eliminating sports at Stanford you know, last year or whatever it was. I mean, they're eliminating 11 of their sports that they, wow. that they have at Stanford. So that was before all this. So, you know, it's, it's, it'll be interesting to see how serious Stanford is about, about, you know, their football program. For sure. Um, you know, where do they turn for, for TV revenue? Do they do, do they hook up individually with Apple and yeah, I think, I think other streaming so. networks. And as far as Berkeley goes, I feel like, their level of football, I feel like they, they would do pretty well in the Mountain West. I feel like they could yeah. it'd be a mid to high level team in the Mountain West. It's just so hard to that this that this is the part that you know it hates to hate to laugh, but it's just kind of like WTF, right? It's yeah. like now you have these you have the the musical chairs and now all the Who's chairs have occupants. And now it's like what what do these programs do? Yeah. And it's like Oregon State, like you said. They have a great coach, but this, this is where it goes back to why it's so difficult for an Oregon State. There's there's always it's almost like living paycheck to paycheck with with programs like Washington State and Oregon State. You know, you you have a coach that comes in, as soon as there's any success at all, they bounce to somewhere else that can pay more. You know, there's there's never a whole lot of longevity with any of with most of, of the coaches on staff, whereas you know, you, you, you look to a place like USC, and that's a place where Lincoln Riley went. Well, know, we don't know how long he's going to stay, but I'm sure Lincoln Riley came to USC with the intention of staying for quite a while, right? Whereas you have Oregon even. Oregon is constantly looking for a new head football coach, you know? Okay, well, that will conclude our little fall of the Pac-12 uh, topic, but that will also conclude our show for the day. So thank you very much for tuning in to another edition of We Are IC's Recruiting Roundup with Scott Schrader. I'm Dylan Brazier, and we'll see you next Monday. Fight on. Fight on.